It's 1030. Hello, everybody. Uh, we've got everybody present. So let's begin with roll call. Deborah, if you could do that for us. Certainly. Hamachi? Here. Madaraki? Here. Bentley? Here. Stumfell? Here. Okay, thank you. And um, do we have any changes to the uh, report from February 10th and March 10th? All right, seeing nothing, uh, no changes. Uh, we'll approve those reports. And Deborah, if you could open the residence forum for us. Certainly, there are two speakers. And let's see here. First up, we have Chloe Camprath. Chloe, I am unmuting you. Please state your full name, Rossmore address, and you have three minutes to address the committee. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm not Chloe. Chloe is here with me. My name is Barbara Gamblin. And I live at 1425 Canyonwood Court, number five. And I, we both are on the Nature Walkers Club. So I will start. Um, my name is Barbara Gamblin, and I am here on behalf of Nature Walkers to speak with you about the importance of a nature path in our community and, ask, and to ask you to request the creation of a nature path in your planning recommendations to the board. A nature path is not a sidewalk that runs along a street. A nature path is also not a hiking trail. A hiking trail can be rugged, narrow, and with steep ascents. Rossmore has beautiful hiking trails, but they come with a caveat, challenging, involving steep hills and uneven footing. They are in relatively isolated areas and require being in good physical condition. A nature path is a sidewalk width path that is paved in some way. It meanders through the community and is for the most part off the main road and passes by whatever natural flora and fauna a particular community ecosystem might offer. It may have benches along the way for resting, visiting, nature, journaling, bird watching, to name a few activities. But most importantly, a nature path is accessible to persons of all physical abilities. Nature paths are becoming an integral part of many active senior communities. I have reviewed several of the newer active senior communities in California, such as the Collective in Manteca, Miralon in Palm Springs, and Four Seasons at Terralago in Indio. They all advertise nature paths as one of their most important amenities. There's a reason for this increasing popularity. As we age, we become more limited in what we can physically do, but we still want social interaction, mental stimulation, and safe exercise. It must be remembered that the average age at Rossmore is 75 plus years. Many of our residents are dealing with a variety of chronic illnesses that prevent them from taking part in our vast array of amenities. This inability to participate breeds social isolation and a sense of loss of community, as well as poor physical and mental health. Here are a few benefits to a nature path in our community. Improved health and decreased isolation, safer, more level outdoor routes for walkers and runners, easy accessibility, a nature path is easy to get to within the community, a safe way to enjoy the environment with friends and family, especially our grand- You have 20 seconds. In conclusion, when choosing a place to retire, seniors want a place to age gracefully. Nature paths are becoming a big part of what they are looking for. Nature Walkers asks that you consider a nature path in your planning for the benefit of our residents and to keep Rossmore current with growing demand. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have Carl Brown. Carl, please state your full name, Rossmore address, and you have three minutes to address the committee. I'm Carl Brown. Uh, 2100 Skycrest, number 12. And <clears throat> the original planning safety committee spent probably more time on the Oakmont Tice Creek uh, problems than any other intersection. We, I don't understand what's going on because we 
not only realigned the crosswalk, which the original crosswalk ended up in the middle of the driveway. So we moved that over to a safer location and uh, provided better access to Gateway. We also added an RRFB, so I don't understand what the proposal for another RRFB, since there is already one located at that intersection. The other thing I noticed is the, your summary mentioned a, a uh, 85th percentile speed of 37. I went did not remember it being that high. I went back and checked the report and it showed it at 27. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask me. I realize this is not the forum for it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That concludes the resident forum. You are muted. We're going to move on to item six, unfinished business. So Jeff, if you could give us an update on the capital projects. OK. Good morning. We will be talking about the facilities master plan here in a, another agenda item, so I'll skip over that. Uh, the water reclamation program. Uh, many of you attended a presentation, a workshop that we held on April 7th. Uh, we had a great turnout from uh, members of the community. I'd say we had about 80 to 100 people there at least. Um, lots of good questions in regards to what a water uh, recycled, satellite water recycled facility actually is and how it, it works. Uh, the importance of providing uh, recycled water for the golf course, uh, the importance of the green space that the, the golf course provides for not only the recreational sport of, of golf, but as a important fire break for the community, um, just green space that the uh, whole community in, enjoys, so the value of it. Uh, we talked about next steps that the uh, process will be, be going through in relation to uh, California Environmental Quality Act studies uh, and working with the, the regulatory agencies. Right now, we are still focusing on Site 6 and Site 5 as uh, potential locations. Uh, we're doing some geotechnical studies, uh, some uh, other studies to make sure that those sites are viable uh, and we'll continue to work with the city. We're meeting with them on a monthly basis prior to submitting an application. So things are progressing. With the uh, solar phase two, uh, we just received a, a updated proposal yesterday for the PPA agreements. Again, we have been working with the, the bank and the funding partner uh, on the, the final terms of the agreement. The bank has uh, provided a, an agreement to a couple of times that still, instead of a PPA, works more like a lease agreement, and that's not going to be acceptable for uh, Golden Rain Foundation. So we've uh, been working with a, you know, new partners and and. Uh, trying to come up with uh, the terms that, that will work. We have also been working with PG&E and the uh, NEM application. They have approved the application. They have uh, evaluated their infrastructure and determined some improvements that they need on site uh, that uh, would, would be necessary to accommodate the uh, solar system. Those improvements for PG&E to complete uh, can take up to 12 months, uh, they estimate. So what we're working on right now is uh, finalizing the plans to submit to the city, real time construction, uh, so that it is complete at the same time as PG&E would complete their infrastructure uh, work. So we're, we're probably about a year out still uh, before we can actually uh, activate a system but things are progressing. 
The pickleball project, uh, we will be conducting the sound study up at Buckeye. There's two different uh, layouts that we're studying. Uh, one would involve courts one and two, uh, converting those to eight courts. Or the other option is to convert courts seven and eight to eight courts. The uh, consultant will be setting up five different monitors uh, throughout the neighborhood. Uh, they measure sound for a 24 hour period prior to any play. And then we will be introducing play on eight courts of pickleball. Uh, they play for an hour at, at each location so we can measure the impact of that. And then they will look at uh, how that sound could be mitigated uh, through different measures. Uh, they are also evaluating the potential for uh, a shade covering and, and what that would do and what you could do with that shade covering as far as sound mitigation as well. Their report uh, likely will take uh, about 30 days to, to complete. The Gateway Studios uh, project, we have met with the three uh, studios, the uh, art studio, wood shop, and the lapidary. Uh, we have a new architect on board. The original architect uh, is retired and, and closed their business. So we had to go about seeking a new architect and uh, coordinating their uh, takeover of the, the plans. Uh, good meetings with each of the studios to just review the, the concepts and the plans and make sure we're all still on the same board since it's been uh, several years since the original plans were, were complete. Uh, so we'll make a few minor adjustments and prepare those for uh, resubmittal to the city, uh, the sanitary district and the fire district for permit and then uh, get the plans out to bid. So hopefully we'll be proceeding with that uh, over the next several months. The access control, uh, we are now working with a project manager uh, from Burr Pilger and Mayor uh, to help us coordinate all of the various functions, uh, the systems, including the uh, completion of that, the central database and, and linking it with uh, the new access control. Uh, tying it to the web portal and making sure we continue with the, the cleanup process of data with GenArc and sharing that data. Uh, we are progressing with uh, MOD and uh, installing the uh, hardware for controlling access up there and working with the employees. Uh, work continues at the front gate on installing the, the hardware. So we are progressing. We're taking a little bit of a, a step back as we bring uh, the consultant and project manager from BPM to make sure that uh, our information is, is flowing correctly and um, we can proceed in a, a positive manner with that. The Hillside Pool Plaster Project, uh, this is one where we, we ran into some issues. It took many months just to get on the, the schedule. We planned it for the time when we were closed uh, over the winter. Uh, as the work began, we ran into some uh, uh, new code requirements that uh, once they, they got into it were discovered. Uh, it took a while working with the county to get those resolved. Uh, we also, once the plaster was, was removed, discovered that the cracking was a little more extensive than originally thought. So there was some time to come up with a solution to that. Uh, and with all contractors right now, they are so busy. Once they have a delay, they're off on other projects. So getting them back uh, to our, our pool has taken some time as well. Uh, we should proceed uh, with work over the next several weeks to, they've completed the tile now uh, and they've passed the plumbing inspection with the county. Uh, we should have uh, deck work done. We were gonna do it today and tomorrow, but with the rain, we had to delay that uh, for another week. Uh, but then we'll uh, complete plastering towards the end of the month and hopefully be back in operation early, early May. Uh, the large conference room, I believe, is just uh, about done. That's a project that's been led by IT uh, that should be ready for meetings moving forward. 
The artificial turf at the bocce courts is scheduled for uh, the first week of May and should take about uh, two weeks. We are raising the uh, surface level, uh, installing some gopher guard, uh, and then laying the new artificial turf. So that uh, should be complete by uh, mid to late May. Um, the pond liner at golf, we had uh, significant delays in trying to get a hold of a, a contractor that could be scheduled to do the work. That was the, the bad news, but the great news is uh, with the Blake's leadership and working with his crew, we were able to lower the levels of the lake. They did a lot of patching um, around the outfall and, and other areas uh, with our in-house crew. And so far it's, it's holding uh, about 95% uh, improvement. So uh, their crew did a, a really good job uh, we're going to monitor it throughout the season and see if it continues to, to hold. So uh, that, that project was, was done with, with great work in-house. In uh, they are working on the alternate transfer pump and piping station. Uh, right now, we, we have a setup where we can capture water just at the base of the outfall uh, where there's uh, some storm drain pipes coming in and circulate that back up to the pond. And we're still working on the, the alternate site as far as the, the pump and piping plan. And then finally, the roof structure at Tice, we're still working on the uh, contract agreements. Uh, this is one where again, uh, with, with the impacts of COVID and, and long delays, the motors and the panels that are involved in that project are over 40 weeks out. So we're getting, on the books and hopefully we'll have the, the projects scheduled, but it'll be much later in the year. I think that about covers our list of projects. Oh, you've been busy, Jeff. Um, thank you very much. Does anybody have questions for Jeff? Ted? On the, uh, the pool liner, they did an amazing job of stopping the water. It's almost just a, a trickle that's coming out of it now. Is there any way that they can just go ahead and finish the job and we don't have to wait for the contractor to do what they're doing? We're going to we're going to monitor that over the next uh, several months. We may lower it a, again. Uh, Blake's aware of a few additional spots that he wants to try and uh, hit with, with the, the crews. But we're, we're right now pretty much monitoring and seeing how those patches hold. OK, thank you. Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Um, I, I, I'm interested in the, uh, well, several different questions. The, the pool plastering and all of the uh, cracking that has been revealed since we emptied the pool. Um, how old is that pool and have we thought about replacing it? You know, I'm not sure that the history of the pool, I know there was some significant renovation done uh, prior to when I started here in 2010. Uh, so I, I believe in the 2000s when it was last done, uh, the pool in, in pump room is, is actually in very good shape. Uh, the, these aren't fatal fall, fatal flaw cracks. They, you know, they can be repaired and have been. Um, the, the deck is in fairly good shape where we're, we're going to do some uh, work on that. So it, it's still got a lot of life left in it. Okay, that's that's the. And Kathleen. Okay, so my question is about the sound study at Buckeye. Um, do they, uh, I, I know they, for, for the pickleball portion of it, they're going to play pickleball. But do they also take into account the um, uh, noise that the players make, you know, calling out and um, that? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so that's why we want to simulate uh, all eight courts in, in activity. Um, tennis can still utilize the other courts. Uh, we want pretty much normal activities simulated so they can capture the sound of the rackets and the balls, but also any conversations and so forth that taking place. So it, it'll capture all of that. Um, Paul, did you, did you have another question, Paul? 
Yes, thank you. I did. Um, the, getting back to the Gateway Studios, I, I don't understand, and I'd like explained um, what the process is for for picking a new architect and who gets involved in that and how that proceeds. It's it seems like you did a very efficient job of replacing the one who retired with the new one, and I just want to understand that process a little. So. Uh... It was a process where I, I received some uh, recommendations from the original architect and, and I received uh, some recommendations from the contractor that did the first uh, phase. Um, I did some outreach to a variety of folks. There's not a lot of uh, architects that are interested in taking on somebody else's work and then putting their, their name to it. Um, I wanted to stick with someone that has some design uh, experience, um, more so than just pure architect. Uh, so I, I contacted uh, a few other companies. This The cost is nominal because most of the work is done. Uh, so it's somebody that can meet with uh, the, the various groups, uh, be willing to take on other plans. Uh, but it, you know, it's just just a, a matter of outreach to a few different uh, companies for settling on one. If I had a question about the pools, uh, uh, the hillside pool, the cracks. Do you know if they're related to just land movement or possible root infestation? Or I think it's just you know, we we have such heavy clay soil uh, from dry conditions to uh, moisture as, as that grows and, and, and contracts, uh, it, it can happen. Uh, there, again, their surface, uh, there's one main surface crack and as we uncovered uh, the, the plaster, there was some additional cracking in the subsurface. Uh, so it, we, we never were losing a lot of water. So that tells us that the, these are cracks that can be repaired. Very good. I wanted to um, bring everybody's attention to the timeline that Jeff has included with the capital project update. And um, I really appreciate having that timeline. It's a great visual for how things will are laid out as far as timing on the different projects. So um, be sure to check those out if you haven't already. Thank you, Jeff. I realize I neglected the chair's report, so I apologize. I don't have a report, but I'll be addressing the other items on the agenda later. Um, now we will move on to new business, um, on to 7A. And Tom, would you like to uh, give us an update on that project? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about Oakmont Way and Golden Rain Road. Um, I did speak to uh, Carl Brown uh, regarding his comments, and he was very apologetic. He, uh, he mistaked it for Oakmont Drive and Tice Creek, which uh, was an issue, and Golden Rain Foundation actually did um, do the same things that we're going to be requesting for Oakmont Way and Golden Rain Road, and that was in installing the crosswalk signs that light up um, and doing other improvements on that road. So those have already been taken care of. And now what I'm talking to you today about is Golden Rain Road and Oakmont Way. So this area has been, uh, has a history of complaints of safety for pedestrians um, for uh, multiple reasons. Um, I know you have in front of you the packet and my write up on it, but essentially you have a crosswalk that crosses four lanes of traffic. It's a very long distance. On one side, you have a turning, uh, the road turns. So there's a limited sight distance before the crosswalk for drivers. You have a downward slope on the other uh, part of um, Oakmont, I'm sorry, Golden Rain Road, which also causes vehicles to increase their speed. There's a history of um, speeding vehicles in that area. We had a 2016 study and the average or the 85 percentile speed was 37 miles per hour. I've been out there many times and I observe um, the speeding. And so I, I'm very familiar with that area as well. So this is a, a proposal or ask that you guys request the Golden Rain Board that we install um, two 
lighted crosswalk signs, as well as a radar reader, and then two static crosswalk um, ahead signs um, in that area. Paul, you have a question? Um, question and comments. Um, I totally agree. People come around that curve by the oleanders and uh, they, they are going above 35 miles an hour and then they gun it to go up the hill toward um, entry, what is it, three and four. Right. And, um, and then they forget to take their foot off the gas at the top of the hill. So they're doing 45 by the time they descend toward golden rain upper and lower. Um, and it really needs to be changed. I think that the warning sign that's on the post on the inside of the sidewalk there needs to, I, th I think one of the reasons that many people fail to see it or don't pay as much attention to it as possible is that it's on the inside of the sidewalk and it needs to be more front and center and I know that it was put there because the, pole, the, the light pole is already there. But I don't think, I think it also needs to be moved back um, further away from the end of the curve because people are, are just then, by the time you get to uh, entry one, you know, it's right after entry one, the, the, where the signs are. And people don't see the cautionary speed sign that, that advises people to, hey, take it slow. We got blind driveways coming up and you're going up a hill and you should be doing 15 miles an hour, not 25. Um, so I think these improvements are definitely needed. Maybe they will bring more, um, maybe they will help people to be more cautious or drive with more responsible ability in that area. Um, but I, I'd like to also take this opportunity to point out one other thing and make some suggestions that you might take a look at, Tom. And that is the, the crossing lights at the intersection of Golden Rain and Tice Creek, where you have the buttons for pedestrians and the flashing lights. Um, but in some cases, with the way they were put up, by the time people stop at the stop sign, you can't see the flashing light. And the pedestrians can't see any of the flashing lights to know that they are working. And it would be nice to have the flashing lights on the reverse side to also highlight the fact um, for drivers and pedestrians that the the lights are flashing and that they are working and it would be a further uh, warning to, to drivers to go slowly through that intersection. Thank you. Maybe that could be taken under consideration as the, the signs at Oakmont Way are installed as well. Those are interesting points. Uh, Kathleen. Uh, yes, I would like to make the motion that we recommend to the GRF board to approve the Golden Rain Road and Oakmont Way Pedestrian Safety Project in the amount not to exceed $35,000 to be paid from the trust estate fund. Okay, a second. I second. Ted, Ted seconds. All in favor, show your hand, please. And it's unanimous. Thank, thank you, you, Kathleen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Tom, I just also wanna thank you for putting up all the flag stations that you put along Tice Creek Drive. So You're welcome. I notice people using those quite frequently. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right, we're gonna move uh, 7B um, down and we're gonna handle uh, 7C right now. So I am going to ask um, Jeff, if you could address that for us. Okay. Yeah. 
So first off, um, this is an item that we presented to the GRF board as a draft of the facilities master plan at their last meeting. Uh, upon discussion and, and review of that plan, uh, the board ultimately wanted some additional scenarios uh, developed and considered by both the planning committee as well as the finance committee. So uh, part of that process, the board was asked to provide a variety of scenarios uh, in regards to the funding, uh, the membership transfer fee and any uh, restrictions on borrowing as far as no additional borrowing, capping borrowing at a certain amount and so forth. We received a, a total of nine different scenarios to prepare for uh, further consideration. Those are uh, in your packets. There are numerous other possibilities that you can consider. Uh, I took the liberty of also making some adjustments to the schedule of uh, projects that is in the spreadsheet, and I'll go over those in just a second. Uh, but again, those are just one possibility and a, a option for consideration. They also uh, provide an opportunity to compare all of the scenarios to the same set of uh, same set of criteria as far as the, the various projects and, and timing, but all of that is something that can be adjusted. It's important to keep in mind as we continue to move forward that the facilities master plan and the overall spreadsheets that uh, is associated with it for the trust estate budget then over the next 10 years is just a, a, a planning tool that this committee and, and ultimately the finance committee and the board can use to determine the projects to be uh, considered over the uh, coming year. There are factors that will influence this uh, plan over time uh, that will require uh, adjustments. Uh, when you know, the sale of the medical center finally goes through, that will create a significant opportunity for the planning committee and, and the board to decide how those funds could be used, how they may influence your decisions on some of the projects or on paying down debt further so that we would limit future borrowing. So decision points will uh, be before you in, in the near future. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, before we go on, I just want to make sure everybody, when we start looking at spreadsheets and the uh, options, that everybody's looking at version 22. It's uh, indicated as V22 in the upper left corner. And it came out with the revised agenda. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Let me... Okay, so uh, you should be looking at the spreadsheet there. I'd like to just, uh, before we get into the various scenarios, and I'm, I'm gonna enlist Joel's help with, with doing that. Uh, before I get started, a uh, big thank you to Joel. He's been at a conference the last couple of days and I was hitting him with some amendments and he uh, took time out of his, his conference to, uh, help produce that revision that was sent out. And he's also done a, a great job with all of these different scenarios and uh, tooling the spreadsheet. So big thank you to, to Joel. Thank you, Joel. This is amazing what you did. So what we're, we're looking at here in the, in the spreadsheet, I'd just like to go over some of the changes that I put into the list of projects and, and the timing. And again, these are suggestions that can be um, changed uh, but as we go through so under the immediate need we have the dollar exterior accessibility project uh, that is a, a project that is involved basically access to the back patio uh, leveling the, the back patio as well as entry into the uh, dollar clubhouse from the rear of the building making that more uh, compliant with accessibility code the studio renovation project that has been authorized already and is in the, the capital budget. 
uh, water reclamation, we have included the amount that has been approved for the current year studies in 232,000. The remainder of that project, we moved down to the wish list for construction at 11 million. The uh, pickleball courts, uh, we changed the facility to, to be determined because we're still looking at a variety of sites uh, and that analysis is ongoing, but the amount for construction of 1.2 million is what was approved in the 2022 budget. The bocce surface improvements, this used to be part of the Sportsman's Park improvements. Since this portion was approved, we separated that out and put that at the 55,000 for the, the court surfacing and then move the Sportsman's Park improvements down to the wish list. The access control system, that is something that is ongoing. Phase one and two have been approved. So we reflect the amount that's in 2022. For the near term, three to six years, uh, the new MOD office building and site improvements. This is a project where originally we had two phases. One was uh, to relocate the garage and warehouse, and then the phase two was to then reorient and rebuild the office complex. As I detailed in the, the staff report, there are many factors that need to be considered before we proceed with a, a MOD project, uh, such as interface with your back of the house operations, such as the, the warehouse and deliveries, forklift operations, and public entry and in, in your public access uh, locations. We need to consider you know, parking, uh, RV parking impacts, the uh, fuel island, uh, make sure that is accounted for, um, any IT and other infrastructure that uh, needs to be uh, considered, especially if we relocate a portion of the building to the upper lot. So part of the, the planning uh, has to consider all of those, those factors and determine the range of options. In working with ELS, we determine that a, a pretty straightforward option in redoing the existing uh, office structure at a building about 15,000 square feet, potential relocation of the entry to off of uh, the, the upper parking, the parking lot just above the facility uh, to separate those would be in the range of about 12.8 million. If you escalate that out, it's, it's in the 18 million in 2027. So that's some of the modifications we made. Further consideration of that project can certainly be made. In the long-term category, the dollar seismic uh, systems, the elevator and finishes, this is pretty much a full gut and renovation of the dollar clubhouse and, and upgrade to current code. Uh, that is shown in, in the long-term uh, category still. We added two items under maintenance just to make sure they're called out. Uh, the first is the emergency access road. This is the project that the board uh, wanted to consider for 2023, so we reflect it there. And then we added an item called drought management projects uh, with the forestry management grant application. There may be some uh, matching funds or some uh, additional funding needed, or if there's projects considered uh, with drought management of uh, parcels on the golf course or other property uh, for GRF, uh, those projects could be considered under that funding. The wish list then contains the remainder of, of the projects. So those, uh, those adjustments were made uh, so that all of the scenarios, the nine scenarios that are possible could be considered against those, those nine. Again, uh, as you move forward, uh, those priorities can change. There's really three significant projects, uh, the water reclamation, the MOD project, and uh, hillside, not hillside, a dollar 
Hillside could also be considered one of those that the committee can think about in relation to overall priority of those projects. Uh, where they fall may be influenced by future funding from the, the medical center or just prioritization of those, those projects. So as we move forward, we can look at the uh, various funding scenarios. Um, Joel, we jump in here anytime you, you'd like, but the view one uh, scenario, which I have on the screen here is what we, we began with uh, last time, and that is increasing the membership transfer fee to 12,000 effective July 1st, and then increasing it by $500 per uh, year on January 1. This uh, scenario results in additional borrowing of up to $17 million over uh, time. In your packets, uh, we put a little uh, information regarding borrowing. Uh, Joel has had a meeting with uh, Mechanics Bank, where he has shared these spreadsheet with them and the concept that we are working towards, uh, the, the ratios uh, at the bottom that are highlighted in yellow. Uh, the bank indicated that they're uh, a willing partner, continued partner with, with Golden Rain Foundation. They certainly can't approve any funding at this point. It would be determined based on individual projects, amounts, timing, economic conditions at the time but they did seem to express their interest in continuing to be a partner with, with Golden Rain. Joel, is there anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, yeah, Jeff, so, uh, so I, I did meet with two representatives of uh, Mechanics Bank uh, in early January. It was actually before these particular scenarios, it was, it was basically the overall e ELS model with all of the projects. Uh, but I did meet with uh, our relationship manager and uh, a senior VP of the bank. I, uh, in, uh, in general terms, went over the model with them, explained um, you know, some of the projects. Uh, again, they, as Jeff had indicated, they, they uh, uh, said that they were certainly willing to work with us. They obviously were not uh, ready to make any uh, form of commitments. Uh, really, the next step uh, with discussions with the bank would be when we've identified specific projects that we want to move forward with. Then at that time, they would review the projects and then determine the amount of funding that would be available. Um, but they they did certainly give me an indication that they're, you know, again, very willing to work with us, um, even uh, easing up on the ratio. Right now, it's uh, two to one, um, the, depending on what, you know, the circumstances are and the economic conditions. Uh, they said they would, again, be willing to work with us on all fronts, but it would be very project specific. For example, if there's a construction project going on, uh, uh, say two or more, they would group those and make a credit assessment based on that grouping. And if there was other projects that were standalone or, or related, they would analyze those on a, on a separate basis to make their determination. So in relation to the spreadsheets, uh, just to go over the, the various components, the, the top half where we have the, under elements, we have the 23 projects listed. Uh, those are all part of the, the master plan. The next line down where it says Rossmore Capital Budget and Projects on an annual basis, this is the list of projects that we complete to maintain the infrastructure. Uh, there's some minor projects uh, for enhancements that fall into that category. Uh, that is what we adjusted in the revised spreadsheet we sent out. We started with uh, an average of 1.8 million in 2023 and then escalated that by 5% over time. Then we have the machinery and equipment. This again is our, our replacement of vehicles, expansion of vehicles and equipment and uh, machinery. 
those three components, the facilities master plan, the Rossmore Capital budget, we call it kind of the long range facilities plan, and the machinery and equipment are what makes up the list of annual projects to be funded. So under this view, you can see that we're able to accomplish the list of projects, fund the uh, capital budget and the machinery and equipment. We maintain the ratio of over two for the borrowing, uh, but there is borrowing uh, to the tune of uh, a little over 17 million that needs to occur in this Actually, scenario. It's on, on this scenario, it's just under 20 million. Right down at the bottom, it says the 19.8. Does that include loan. current loans though? No. No. Okay. And then the next one that we were asked to look at was uh, $12,000 uh, increase, increase the membership transfer fee to 12,000 beginning 2022, and then no further approved increases. Again, we have the same criteria for the projects. Um, under this scenario, we're increasing the amount of borrowing to maintain the level of funding up to 32 million. And doesn't um, doesn't that view number two that we're looking at um, alter the debt ratio so that it falls below 2.0? In the outer years, yes, thank you for pointing that out. In the outer years, as of 2028, uh, it does drop below uh, for a few years, uh, that, that desired ratio. So that likely would impact our ability to actually borrow uh, that amount and complete funding of this level. In the next scenario, view three, this is where the membership transfer fee is increased to 12,000 beginning July 2022. No further increases and future borrowing is limited to 12 million in additional debt. This uh, is where some of these projects in the facilities master plan uh, in the outline that I provided are impacted. So the MOD office uh, rebuilds would be limited to 12 million. So that would scale that project back significantly. Uh, you might be looking at more of a, a remodel rather than a, a tear down and new construction. Uh, projects such as the, the dollar seismic systems and elevator, uh, that would be moved to the wish list. So some of your major projects in the outer years are impacted by uh, limiting future borrowing. View four, this is where the uh, membership transfer fee is at 12,000 beginning in July. And then there is no additional uh, debt added in the outer years. This significantly impacts the ability to complete projects. Um, the MOD project is moved out to long-term and it is definitely uh, more of a remodel type project. Um, at just over 7 million. The dollar project would be moved to the wish list and we may even impact some of those uh, maintenance projects. View five, no increase in the membership transfer fee and no additional debt. Again, this completely takes out the dollar projects. Uh, excuse me, takes out something like the MOD project, limits dollar to more of a remodel and eliminates our, our maintenance projects in 2023. Looking at view six, this is where we actually increase the membership transfer fee to 13,000 on July 1, 2022, and then increase it by $500 each subsequent year on January 1st. This uh, generates additional revenue. You can see the main impact is the transfer fee to debt ratio increases. Uh, and I believe our total loans under this uh, are 14.2 million 
and you're able to accomplish this list of projects. View seven, increase it to 15,000 on July 1, and then by an additional $500 annually on January. This just provides additional resources to complete the projects, reduces borrowing to 5.3 million over time, and the ratios continue to build in the outer years. Getting there. View eight, um, increasing by 1.5 thousand on July 1, 2022, another uh, 1.5K on January, 2024, and each subsequent year by $500. Um, so this one you know, is somewhat in the middle, provides for loans of 20.6 20, uh, 20 million, maintains the ratios, and you're able to complete the list of, of projects. And finally, view nine is increasing by 1,000 on July 1, 2022, and another 1,000 every three years. So a more gradual increase uh, that results in a need to borrow 31.6 million in order to accomplish this list of projects. Uh, but also does maintain the ratio, except for that very outer year, you're, you're pretty close. So I think that is the conclusion of the various scenarios. Again, there's a number of ways to look at this. I'm going to stop sharing. And if you would like to look at other options, which may involve turning on or off a particular project, or if you would like to discuss uh, which projects you may want to move up or out or uh, change, perhaps uh, a different project has a higher priority, um, or if you want to look at different funding scenarios, uh, I believe Joel can do some of that on the fly. Okay, thank you so much, Jeff that, and Joel. These are amazing scenarios. It was an incredible amount of work, um, but it does paint a picture of how things work out with different members of transfer fees and debt loads. And um, it really helps us decide where we wanna go, what do we wanna do? So before we get into questions and different scenarios, I just wanna ask the committee, to um, consider a few things, you know, set your mind in a certain position before you, well, just consider these things. Like what, what are our top three priorities? Um, I think we as a committee, um, in order to recommend something to the board should probably be in agreement on what those three priorities are because that determines what options, what projects are included in the spreadsheets and then ultimately determine what's needed in an MTF to get those projects accomplished. Um, also, I want to know, you know, what is, what are your feelings about debt load? Um, do we, do we want to pursue debt or do we are we nervous about debt are we nervous about the economy do we want to do things um, by putting money aside or planning accordingly or uh, avoiding debt altogether um, you know do we want to proceed with an assumption that no loans would be available that you know given a bad situation in the economy or no collateral that a bank wouldn't give us loans or do we want to risk that and then also i think we want to consider how do we feel about the finance committee's initial recommendation of uh, increasing the mtf to twelve thousand a year with a 500 dollar increase a five hundred thousand i'm sorry a 500 increase every year um and you know how does that you know by looking at all those different views how does that play out for you as far as uh income from the mtf 
So with that, if you have a question, I see Ted has a question, so go right ahead. So for uh, Joel and Jeff, um, how much is it, is it good for us to work with loans or not loans? That's kind of a general, you know, business way of doing business for Rossmore. And I just want to get that clear in my head first. So yeah, from, from my perspective, I think limiting debt is always a good thing. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, there's always a balance, right? And, and I would say, uh, you know, a lot of those scenarios that have the membership transfer fee with, you know, uh, either no increase or a slight increase obviously uh, puts us in a very high potential debt situation. To me, I, I think that uh, is probably not financially sound. And, and of course, we may not even have that capacity. But limited debt, uh, you know, uh, ranging from right now, our current debt is about $12.5 million from, um, for the outstanding loans. Uh, personally, I would not. I would like to see it, you know, not exceed that amount. As we, uh, and, and of course, as the, you know, the medical center situation becomes, uh, um, uh, you know, more uh, as we get more information, um, and that becomes more of a reality. That is, you know, a, another factor to consider. But anyway, to your point, uh, uh, you know, anything in excess of say. To me, fifteen million dollars is is uh, a little bit too much debt. Okay, I have two other questions. Then I've noticed on every one of the sheets, uh, the year twenty twenty seven, at the bottom, uh, uh, um, cumulative cash balance after loans. Every one of those were zero. Is what that's because that's because we're taking on debt. So every time we take on debt, the, 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 the way the model works is it, it, it essentially uh, forces us to borrow because we've run out of funds. Okay. But, but that, that does account for the, uh, the model includes the reserve funds. So the, the uh in each of those scenarios we work up to a four million dollar reserve i think by the time we hit 2026 or 2027 so those reserve funds right now it's i believe two million uh two and a half million uh we we in the model it's increased by 250k until we hit four million dollars so the model does include reserve funds going out to say, you know, the end of the 10 year period of $4 million. And um, so the last question is maybe more for the whole group. Um, if I think that one of the projects that's on the list that we cannot not let happen is, is rebuilding the mod area for you know, we're talking about re employee retention and attracting people to come to work here. We need to do something to make their offices livable. That cannot be taken off of any of our projection of what we want to do in the future. And my thought is we could go through these scenarios and any one of those that are taking off that major project, we can 86 out of here and make it so we have a, a limited list of things to look at. And that's kind of like, that's up for everybody just to, what do you think? Okay, Kathleen. Um, okay, so um, I, I agree, um, since you asked the question, that, the, uh, that we do need to do something with the um, MOD. Um, whether it's the whole 18 million or if it's only 12 million, uh, that's something to be decided. So um, one thing that I have is um, I think that the uh, total renovation of dollar can be put on the move down to the wish list because I think we really have to think about what we're what we uh, 
uh, really need to do. So I am concerned um, with the debt that we would be taking on. And I would like to limit it to about 12 million uh, for the future. And I think Joel said 15, I think 10, I think 12 would be uh, like a good number and part, and I have a reason that, that I arrived at that number. I'm also concerned, very concerned about um, the MTF going quite as high as some of these scenarios uh, um, call for. And I talked at the last meeting, and I would like to bring it up again. I, I didn't put this into Joel early enough for him to really research it, but part of this is a question. So um, I did a little research at, um, in the paper, there was the Laura Strand market report of things that have sold in Rossmore. And one of them was just under 2 million. This is um, as of March 29th. Um, there were one, two, three, four, um, five that sold for over a million, close to a million and a half or 2 million. And I know one across, right across the street from me uh, just uh, sold for 1.3 million. Um, but there are also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that sold for under 400,000. Two of them sold for 200,000 and 205,000. So you're asking someone who uh, in the future to um, buy something for between 200 and 300 or you know, um, 350. And you're asking them to spend um, 17, 18 um, uh, thousand uh, on the MTF. And we have a lot of those units that are um, very small, one bedroom. And I think it makes it very difficult for someone. So what I brought up the last time was that um, do a hybrid. And I want to ask Joel about, about this. So I did just, it would take some more complicated um, thinking, but for um, something that is a million and a half, 0.5% is 700 and, and, um, and uh, 7,500. Um, something that cost um, something that was 300,000, it's 1,500. So it's a huge difference, right? And I think that someone who, who is buying um, a million and a half or a $2 million place in Rossmore can afford to pay a little bit more in the MTF than someone who's buying something for 200,000 or 300,000. Um, and uh, my question for Joel is, I understand that this is a membership fee. So if it's partially a something that's tied to the cost of what they buy, uh, do you consider that, it, would that be a problem? And maybe Tim can an talk to this or Joel can answer this or both of them can say something about this. And so, so this would be on top of, you know, say a 10 or $11,000, uh, MTF and then a portion of it be, um, you know, the 0.5% or whatever. And we would have to work out because we would want to make sure that we were getting enough money in this. Um, so anyway, so that's my, that's my first question. Tim, do you want to address that? Yeah, I can talk about that. So we've, we've talked to our attorney about this exact question in the past. And, and again, just recently, you might recall on Monday, there was a response uh, question to the board that was responded to uh, a resident had asked basically this exact same question. So uh, when you when you create a variable transfer fee based on the housing price, it now looks like a property transfer fee, not a membership transfer fee, because there, there's no additional benefit given to somebody who pays more in that scenario. And there's no additional benefit of membership. So if somebody pays, you know, ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for membership, based on the sale price, a percentage of some sort, 
uh, there's no additional benefit that they get. So uh, it's likely our attorney's opinion is that it is likely that this would be deemed to be an illegal property transfer fee. Okay, so, could... so let me just ask. Um, first of all, this would only be a hybrid. Was that the question? It, it would be only partially the percent. And let me also ask, is this a California problem? Because I know that in- It's a California other... issue. It's, it's, a Cali issue. it's a specific California law under Davis Sterling. Other states don't have Davis Sterling, just California. Okay, so even if it's a hybrid, um, so it's partially- You're linking it to the purchase price. It's okay. there, There's not additional membership benefit given to the person paying more money. All right, throw that out. Okay. Maybe so, uh, so, so to, just to conclude then, I think that the dollar thing can be, uh, the dollar renovation can be moved to the wish list. And I think our debt needs to be, um, uh, needs to be kept at, uh, at about 12,000, I mean, 12 million, that could be changed in the future. So the one I come closest to is, um, is view number three. Um, uh, because when we sell the um, medical center, we would either be able to put money into the, um, into the MOD renovation, or we would be able to put money into the uh, water reclamation. And then the other of those two projects um, could be, um, we could uh, uh, borrow money to do. And so, um, so I, I, I printed out everything, I, and I uh, guess it's the older version of it, but it, it's not that much different. So, um, so that's my feeling is that um, number three, um, the MTF increased to 12,000 and it says no further increase. So, um, and I would modify that, that every three years, it could be raised to another $1,000. Um, and then $12, 000, $12 million is the borrowing limit. So it's the three is the closest to uh, how I feel, but um, it's not exactly. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Jeff. I just wanted to comment in relation to the dollar project, uh, the funding that is included in 2030-31 is for really a, a gut and remodel uh, and adding an a elevator. This is a project that you could do over time as a uh, renovation. So, for example, you could do the restroom renovation that we originally were talking about uh, for downstairs and you could do the renovation for the restrooms upstairs you could rebuild the um the inside the atrium the window structure in the the main living area you could do a project standalone project for an elevator so you could take that project and really spread it out over time and look at it more in the Rossmore Capital budget as uh, annual projects that are done to keep the clubhouse functioning and, and in good repair, uh, rather than do a full remodel at, at one time. That's just, just an optional way to look at this. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Ted. So, that uh, question I had out there uh, of eliminating uh, views, we could eliminate view three, view four, and view five because they all take out MOD. And I mean, that's, that's where I was going with that question out to everybody, just to kind of tighten up everything that we're doing. I know that uh, uh, Kathleen was saying view three is what she wants to do, but and I, and, and I can see where $12,000 locked in for the whole time is, is something that she would con, might consider as because it would be an increase and stuff, but it's still going to make it so we can't do the MOD. So uh, I think- Just a slight correction, Ted, View 4 has MOD office in it. It's just- I think it was back. moved to the wish list though, wasn't it? No, it was not. Let me check. Line 10. Okay. 
I'll look at that while you. So uh, for for view three, MO, the the scope of the project for MOD is reduced in 2027. It's reduced to about yeah 12.7 million right in view three. Right. right. And so if you change view three, like I suggested, so that every three years uh, you raise it another thousand dollars, then um, what can be done to MOD um, is expanded. Um, but I don't think you, you can eliminate view three because it takes out MOD. It just takes out MOD as a complete $18 million dollar. Uh, rebuild and i think we can figure out a way to do it for less than that or um uh, or we, you know we would have to rethink um if you raise it a thousand dollars every three years um instead of every year or every two years um what how that would play out with what could be done with mod i'm not eliminating mod i'm just saying um it's it's 18 million is too much Kathleen, I'll just ask you, why do you pick three years? Um, because I, th I just think it makes it a little, um, I think just a thousand dollars every two years um, just escalates it. And uh, I really am concerned about people who are buying things at 300,000 uh, versus 2 million. Okay. Let's do a little uh, exercise first, um, like a straw poll was the show of hands. How many of our committee members feel that um, the MOD building should be included in the this scenario? Uh, are you talking about the full build? No, I'm talking about just the office portion of MOD. The, okay, which would be less than 18 million. Well, with no price, like how important is that to you as a priority? Okay, that's unanimous. How many of us feel that water reclamation and drought management is important to be included in a view, a scenario? Okay, and then how many of us feel that the emergency access road needs to be addressed in a view as well? Fire mitigation. Okay, so those are two major priorities. So we have to consider that and then we can um, adjust if necessary, like Jeff said, with a scaled back option. Um, I'm gonna offer my idea. Um, with those priorities in mind, I think view four with the increase of to 12,000 and the original well, view four to me works out because the dollar um, renovation, full renovation is pushed to wish list. But like Jeff said, there's a possibility of breaking that down into smaller chunks. Uh, we get the MOD building, the office, possibly scale back. And then we get uh, lines 15 and 16 uh, emergency road and drought management, we get those early on. And that's when we need that information. That's when we need that, those projects done. I would add to view four that we go with the finance committee's um, original proposal of the 12,000 MTF with an additional 500 every year. One of the main reasons I like view four is there's no debt. And I don't think, I'm just a super cautious person. And I think that things are gonna get tough in the next couple of years. Uh, I'm very nervous about the economy. And I think if we function pay as you go or sock it away for the projects that we've stressed are the priorities, I think that's the way to go. I don't like that at all. There are some options under 10, that's a possibility as well, but Going would, above 10 is not recommended. Leanne, would, would you like us to do some some of these scenarios? I, I believe Joel can yeah, implement I think, some. Uh, so we could do Kathleen's initial uh, scenario of view three with 500 every three years. 
Is that Joel? Am I putting you on the spot? Is that yeah, possible? No, there? No. Yeah, uh, it's very easy to do. No problem. So we, we could look at view three, but add was it 500 or a thousand every three years? A thousand every three years. A thousand oh. every three years and eliminate the dollar or, or move the dollar uh, project to the wish list. I right. That was correct. Yeah. And borrowing a limited to 12 million. But I, that's not, you don't have to. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. So just to oh. make sure we're, we're looking at view three, moving the membership transfer fee to 12,000 on July 1st, 2022. And then every three years, increasing it by a thousand dollars and limiting debt to 12 million. And then we're we're moving the dollar clubhouse uh, improvements to the wish list. Okay, got that. So again, and just to just to reiterate, the the borrowing is incremental to what we have today. Just just so that we're clear. So right now we have twelve and a half million dollars worth of debt. We're paying that off, you know, slowly, and it and it dissipates in you know several years. But the model here is uh, additional debt. Uh, additional debt to the twelve million we have. That is correct. Oh, okay. So so I didn't understand that at all because yes. I was thinking that when we paid this off, what we have, then we would be able to borrow more no. for the other. No, this is this model is additional debt to what we have today. So well, can you play that scenario out anyway? So we see how the debt load works out. Yes. So Joel, uh, loan one is paid off in 2027 and loan two in 2028. Is that correct? Uh, Let's see. Loan one is uh, correct. It's paid off in uh, by the end of 2027, and loan two uh, by the end of 2029. 2029. So a significant amount of your your debt is paid before you, but uh, depending on what scenario you're looking at, before you would access additional borrowing. Okay. Joel, right. can you share your screen with that? Yeah, and, and that's and that's why on um, on model three, the new mod office building is moved to 2027 because um, we have paid off some of the, um, the the one loan, right? That's when that timing was was yeah associated. So I'm sorry, Jeff. Did you want me to share a screen? Yeah. Did you want to share a screen so? we can see that scenario played out oh did you want me to update it like right now is that possible or um let me uh yeah let let me give me a, just a couple of minutes then i could show okay. the screen okay so let me ask a, a a question in this um so um view four which uh, leanne was talking about i think is a is viable except i have one question so it says under this under four that um my, the mod project would need to be scaled back to a rehab project so um does that mean there would be no new building you would just put new something in the current building what explain a little bit more about the rehab yeah, I, I don't think you can complete a tear down rebuild for six, seven million uh, it, when you consider escalation by 2030. Um, when we're looking at that 18 million, that that's a $12 million project in today's dollars escalated out to 2027. So in in today's dollars, the the 6.5 million or seven seven point seven million is a, a I can't do reverse but probably about a four million dollar project uh so that that would be equivalent to a, a rehab um I'm not sure what you could get done for that what it would look like um you're talking about a shell of a building that is an old warehouse to begin with so 
you know, what you can rehab is is somewhat questionable. Yeah. So this is the problem I have with four is, uh, you know, I had marked it as a possibility. And then I was like, well, you really wouldn't be able to do anything to MOD, which we all consider is important to do more than just, um, uh, you know, put new carpet in or whatever you could do for for the, for four million. Um, and and so and that's partially, Leanne, why I said we we do need to increase it uh, into the future a little bit so that um, that we have that. But if you take the dollar clubhouse out, um, then uh, by increasing it every three years, so it goes up a little more slowly than it was than uh, than finance talked about before. Um, we would we the um, water reclamation project um, unless you do something it gets eliminated. So um, so we would be able to keep the MOD project and keep the water reclamation project both as possibilities if we have some debt in the future and also uh, a slight increase. Did Joel, I talk you into three? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, could I ask for another scenario? It doesn't have to be done now, actually. I was thinking we could ask these scenarios, to ask that they be presented to the board at the end of May. I mean, end of March, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> April. I think our, our next step is is to discuss this with finance committee during their their meeting. Um, so what would be really helpful for them as you you initially did was what are those top priorities project wise for the the committee, uh, and then finance could also evaluate how we can get there. I think we have established that top the top priorities. Does everybody agree with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but Joel, I would ask for another scenario. Second changed scenario, which would be view four with uh -huh. the addition of 500 per year. So the only change is 500, uh, an additional 500 per year each year? Cor correct, because I wanna see how that plays out with what we could do for the MOD, what we could do for the MOD office. The debt will still be zero unless the office situation alters that. But I, I just want to see how that how that flows. Okay, I just finished view three. Just give me another couple of minutes for four. Okay, thank you. And Paul, your question. I think we're, um, if, I, if I look at all of these views, um, what I see is a valley of doing nothing, 24, 25, 26, 27. Um, we're facing inflationary headwinds. I bonds are going up to 10% probably the next time it's announced. That means inflation is going to be significant. Um, I think looking at uh, some of these projections, you know, e even if you look at the original projection for the mod office building, it's six or seven months ago was 12.8 you know, and uh, is now 14, 14 million, 80,000. And we are not going to get there with view three or view four. I think we need to be more realistic. And um, if we are really talking about valuing what we have in Rossmore, we need to be much more bullish on this. We need to go bigger. We need to protect our infrastructure and improve it. And um, in order to accomplish that, 
we need to be somewhat more aggressive. I, I know what Kathleen is talking about in terms of uh, the difference between a million five manor and a 200,000 manor, but I don't think there are too many 200,000 manors left. And um, so, so I'm, I'm looking and, and I don't want, I don't think debt is the answer because I don't think the bank can commit to that. The bank hasn't committed to that. And from what Tim and Joel and Jeff have been telling us is the banks are skittish about loaning in the future. We don't have any collateral. They don't have any, they don't have any reliance other than the F MTF. So I don't think that that's a good strategy to try to use. We need to pay our own way. And if we don't go to something like view seven, we're never going to get, you know, even with view seven, we're only talking about two or three of the major projects that, that we're looking at, you know, and there's 23 on the list. So just to clarify, Paul, you're, are you so suggesting- I'm, I'm, that, urging, yeah. I'm urging people to take a really good hard look and to go for number seven. Okay, Kathleen. Um, so, number one, I would say um, uh, I have also heard it predicted. Well, I think it was Larry Summers who predicts a recession next year. So, I don't think we can base what we're doing on what the economy is going to be like um, next year, the year after, the year after. Um, so, um, and if you look at view seven, um, this is 15,000 and then increasing it by, by another thousand every two years. Um, that would enable us to do things like um, the uh, walking paths, the poolside renovation and put in a new ramp and um, lawn bowling shade structure, gateway building replacement with a cafe, sportsman park improvements, okay, and, um, and a playground. So I think this place has been around here for 60 years without those things. It'd be lovely to have, uh, I, you know, my grandkids would love to have a playground uh, here, um, but We've, been, we've existed for 60 years without a playground for the grandkids. And I think you have to balance, what do we want? This ramp into the hillside uh, pool, be lovely to have, but it's a lot of money. And that pool has been there for a lot of years without it. Um, and I think we have to be um, physically responsible and um, the MTF being $20,000 a year, I think is nuts. I think Jeff has a comment. Okay, Jeff, I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say under view seven, um, just with the, the base view, which does include the dollar, which it sounds like might be something to eliminate, but it it still has loan new borrowing of just over 5 million without adding any of those wish list projects that, that you just mentioned. Yeah, I don't think the wish list projects come in. That none of them are listed, other than on the initial list. Well, I think what's been made apparent is that we really can't afford to do a lot of those things on the wish list. We went through an exercise where we came up with different ideas, but now we're realizing, after setting our priority that maybe those things aren't possible. Right. How about we come up with a um, high, medium and low, well, three alternatives, high, medium and low, try to agree on those three and present those to the finance committee and see, see what they say. Okay, Joel, what do you have here? So this is the uh, this is the <clears throat> the summary page. So view three, I changed uh, to add one thousand dollars every three years. 
So you could, uh, you know, the, the summary page will, uh, this essentially increases the, um, the funding for the 10 years to 62,550. It allows us to do uh, total projects of uh, 18,410. Um, and uh, the, uh, the loans is uh, 9.5 million. So if we go to view three, I, uh, with that scenario, I was able to increase the MOD facility to 14.5 million and still keep the debt to uh, under $10 million. Okay, so yeah. it's 12,000 MTF with 1,000 every three years? Uh, correct. Okay. So that brings it from so if we if we increased it mid year this year, it would be the next increase would be thirteen thousand in twenty twenty four. Then we would uh, by twenty thirty one it would be sixteen thousand. Okay. So I I I like that scenario. Um, okay. How, I, I yeah, how would go ahead? I'm sorry. And then in view four, uh, I simply added another five hundred dollars per year. I don't think it really made that much of a difference. The, the funding would be $61,650. Um, but we would only be able to do uh, $11.6 million in projects, but this would be no new loans. So project four or view four. Um, yeah, so the, the MOD building, the only additional uh, the funding that and I, I had to stretch it over two years in order for not for there not to be any loans, uh, but in 2030 and 2031 there would be about 7.8 million dollars. Okay. All right. So, committee members, how are you feeling about <clears throat> having? Kath Kathleen's modification of view three as say our low scenario, maybe the modification of view four as our mid-level scenario, and then a more aggressive scenario that we haven't really talked about details about being uh, with a higher MTF, uh, such as um, maybe seven or less. I don't know. We haven't flushed that out yet. But how would you feel about those, the modified three and four being two of three scenarios we present to the Finance Committee? Tim. So I uh, may, I, I'm, I actually had my hand up before you posed the question, um, but I think it might be helpful to get a little more information from Jeff around MOD. Uh, since there seems to be unanimous interest in MOD, and I, I can tell you from the staff perspective, there's unanimous interest. This is something that just has to be tended to, and it, to think that it, it would have to go another 10 years to have it be addressed, it's going to be problematic for GRF in the long term. So. Jeff, my question, and you and I had talked a little bit about this a few days ago, but, um, and you might have touched on it when you made your opening remarks and I might have missed it. So the total project at MOD is to do the, to rebuild the building, probably likely construct a second story that would be accessible from the upper lot. So residents and the corporate vehicles, the corporate yard don't mix because that's been a big part of the problem up there is that you've got heavy equipment and trucks and deliveries and so on and residents coming into the same exact space to, to park. So we'd probably create a second story with an entrance from above. So the residents, the mutual board members, committees and so on would enter at that level and probably all of the corporate stuff down at the lower level. So <clears throat> I know that Jeff, part of what you had or what ELS had identified was the garage area. And I guess <clears throat> I guess my question is how critical is the garage 
and the vehicle maintenance area to, to this model of reconstruction. Yeah, it'd be great to redo the entire thing, but is it really, is that part of it and the warehouse, are those two areas that critical? Or is it, if we were to just focus on the office area, which is currently housing, you know, for meetings and it's housing all this, most of the staff, um, if we just focused on that, what might that be? And if we didn't do the warehouse and the vehicle area, um, can we throw a different number in here? So we're not looking at an $18 million inflated figure, you know, eight years out. Um, I thought we were just looking at the office. I thought we Jeff had broken that out. Oh. <laughs> so what we're looking at with, with the estimate of 12.8, and I know these numbers seem crazy, but you're talking about a, an office building with a lot of components and infrastructure. This is tearing down and replacing the existing building uh, with a building of about 15,000 square feet, so slightly larger than the current building, doing nothing with the warehouse and garage that would be left on, on site as is. Uh, you're about 12.8, um, figuring uh, the, the cost for some additional site improvements. To scale back, and, and then what we did is we escalated that for you know, the, the current inflation that, that we're in, and then we escalated it by 5% inflation a year to get to the 18 million. To conceive of a project less than really a, a full teardown and rebuild of that office complex where you're doing something in the 7 million range in 20, 30 dollars, it's just, it's going to be very difficult to do anything meaningful. Um, I know $4 million sounds like a lot of money, but uh, you're, you're not going to be able to do a teardown rebuild. Uh, you, you can use modular type uh, construction. Uh, there, I mean, there's a variety of things you can do, but it's still for a, an office space. The $12 million is about the, the low end of what you, you can do there the pl original plan from from ELS where we were talking about relocating the garage and warehouse would reorient the office building separate those two functions completely that was where we were in the you know 20 plus million over four years and two different projects and so my con my concern then is the the smaller number in in some Scenario of these models, four. view six, no, I'm sorry, yeah, view four, four was it? Or view five? No, sorry, view five, it's off. So yeah, view four. Um, so you, what you had said earlier was that just taking a guess at a net present value of a you know, $7 million project, probably in today's dollars being around $4 million is probably in the ballpark. And it doesn't buy us very much is what you're saying. Uh, my concern is that even contemplating that, I, I don't think it's going to achieve what needs to happen up there, which is to make better use of the space. And, and really, it's, it's, the building is just a tilt up. It's, it's a warehouse that somebody slaps some drywall on, on the inside and it's in, the building is in pretty bad shape. So it seems that the only solution for there. I, I thought the 12 million included the whole, when you said site improvements, I thought it included the whole area, but yeah, so, no, that, just... all right. So just, you were only talking about the office building. So in that regard, then I would recommend that you don't consider anything less than the forecasted cost. Uh, I, it's just not going to get you what needs, what you, it would be throwing good money after bad. It's one of those lipstick on a pig kind of things. Hmm. So scenario four then would would be your your low end scenario, and then scenario three as modified by <clears throat> Kathleen, I believe, would be your your mid range. What if you altered <clears throat> scenario four? Let me see. Joel, can you pop up that altered scenario four again? I'm thinking about changing scenario four to include the full cost of the MOD office. Well, if you do that, then you're probably back to view three. 
So uh, view four being the full uh, 18, let's see, what was it, the, yeah. So while he's doing that, let me let me just ask to, so I'm clear about the um, the cost. So in in 2027, redoing just the office space, not the warehouse, but just the office space, would be 12 million or 18 million. 18 million. 18.8. Almost okay. just under 19 million. So what that's doing is taking the 12.8 estimate in today's dollars adding uh, an immediate kind of inflation factor and then escalating that. Okay, then let me ask yeah. another question. If we, um, if we sold the uh, medical building in the next year, that project could be moved up. And in today's dollar, it would be more like 12 or 13 million. That, it, as I mentioned, uh, kind of in my opening remarks, that, that is, there are three main projects, right? There, the water reclamation, MOD, and uh, potentially uh, dollar. If you sell the, the medical center and you have the resources from that, you could conceive of adding uh, a project such as water reclamation. You could conceive of redoing your priority and moving MOD up. Uh, you could instead pay off some some debt so there once that scenario happens there are some reshuffling or some different priorities that you can consider right so whether we whether we say no more debt or we say um debt in 2027 which is when the, some of the other things are paid off that could be changed at any point in the next um three years before 2027 right so if all we, of this yeah, all yeah. of this is is a planning tool that it is subject to change at the board's direction at any time sure so and, and we're, so we're going to be looking at this every year every year and yes right so um whether we do the debt or not um no debt or uh, you know limited debt to 12 million between view three and four, it really doesn't make any difference because it could be changed uh, in two years. Um, and then, you know, and then we're back to, we could do the MOD uh, and, and water reclamation if we decide to do that. So I I should think, give, sorry. I'm sorry, I go think, ahead, Jeff. I, I should give that a, a caveat though, that it, it can be amended at, at any point at the direction of the board. However, you are putting something out there into the community and you're building expectations. Uh, so if you identify a, a project in year 2027 or 2030, whether it's dollar or, or something else, uh, and then it's moved off, there are going to be segments of the community that will look at this and say, well, you planned on it being there and, and their expectations would would be dashed. So you, you want to be careful still, even though it can be changed of what your initial plan looks like. Okay, Ted, you had a question? Um, on the, you know, we always, we think about, we have this chunk of money coming in from the uh, medical center. Medical center is what we got our loans against. We don't, and this is for Joel. Do we know whether the bank will call those loans in and want them paid off because they're going to have no collateral anymore against their loans? So, yeah. So uh, they indicated to me this was uh, uh, maybe mid 2021 when we were talking about the medical center that when the medical center actually does sell, there we need to pay down uh, additional debt by two and a, by about. Two and a half million dollars, but there. So the the collateral uh, is not only the medical center, but the collateral is also the membership transfer funds, right? So they're they're seeing that as a steady stream of funding coming into the organization, and they could base their uh, their collateral on that on that funding. But when the medical center does actually sell, they are going to require us to 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 pay down about two and a half million dollars from the proceeds. And and then also, I mean, I'm 
because we don't know what the exact numbers are going to be, uh, we are probably going to have to pay a capital gains tax on that, correct? Uh, that I would have to get advice from our uh, from our tax people uh, with our CPA firm because we do have a lot of uh, net carryover losses from an income tax perspective. Oh. But when you're talking about capital gains, it gets a little tricky. So uh, uh, we would need to get advice from our CPA firm on that. So the final number is still in flux. We don't know what that final number is going to be because of these other two situations, the taxes and the uh, um, and the pay down of the loans and everything. We don't know where that final number is going to be to count on it for something like we're talking about now. I would agree. Also, we have to debate where that money goes. It's not a set determination right now. Kathleen? Um, so um, we have sort of talked about view three, view four. Um, I would like to hear from um, the other two members about if they have an upper end, are they, would they like to see um, number seven is the other view that we send to um, the finance committee? I would, which, okay. Which would be, um, 15,000 and increase it by 500 each year. Um, then we can do all the projects under immediate long-term and um, and borrowing of, um, of under 6 million. Or are they interested in view um, eight, which is, uh, has more, more borrowing but we could cut down on the uh, on the things that we would do. Which what which, which of those are they most interested in? Before we do that, I'd like to just have a discussion about um, three and four, and they are they can run pretty close. Um, well, but, let's just do them both. Right, we can. But I just think the committee needs to decide about how we want how we're recommending or looking at the MTF plan. So we're going to ask for 12, but how do we all feel about your option of, you know, increasing every three years versus an increase every year? Um, I'd like to hear from people on that before we move forward um, to another scenario. Ted. Increase every year. Up 500? Yes. Paul, how do you feel about that? Um, I don't think there's much difference between increasing, well, an increase of 1,000 every three years um, delays our ability to meet project goal. Um, I wouldn't have as much problem with it if, if we say we're increasing it $333 a year or something like that, you know? I mean, that's basically, you know, you divide three into a thousand and that's, that's you're, you're forgiving approximately $160 a year. So maybe, maybe, maybe the, um, compromise is to go up $400 a year. That sounds okay to me. Kathleen, we couldn't convince you to go with the 500 per year as recommended by the finance committee. Yeah. Yep. I won't be in on the final decision. So go for it. Uh, Jeff. I, I just want to try and guide you back to as you're thinking about that and in view three and four ultimately what your your goal might be in relation to mod and dollar and how you treat those two two projects and under view four as tim was talking about there's not a lot you can do with with mod so you're you're somewhat taking that off of the the list and then well, for all, no, all of I these, I want to just debate that because I, 
I think if we kept view four with um, the adding as Joel has modified it with the 500, but increase the amount allotted to MOD office, we haven't seen how that plays out for a loan. Yeah, actually, it's right here. It it would create a loan of just under $14 million. Okay, I take that back. Okay, I see that. So there's not a whole lot different between the two. If 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 I change view three to be $500 every year. Um, that would be great. Then, um, then uh, and it has a debt limit at, at, you know, 12 million, then we can do the MOD the right way and take um, Dollar Clubhouse off the list, uh, put it on the wish list. I would like to add that as a version. Okay. And then keep in mind to the, your right now, you mentioned water reclamation as a, a high priority. It is still on your wish list. Yeah, well, like I said before, I think we we will be getting money from the um, from the sale of the medical building, and then we have this debt. So, um, I mean, the um, uh, money that we can borrow. So, I think that the water reclamation could come back on the list if we sell the medical building, but I wouldn't put it back on now until we sell the medical building. Okay, Ted. So like you said, Leanne, every one of these things is going to be looked at every single year. Uh, you know, I mean, we're going to go over this again next year. So if we go with the scenarios, you got view, I would like to add one, you got view three, view four, and I'd like to add in view seven to see how that would look and, and then make our determination off of one of those views. Um, I'm not a big person on getting loans. I really don't like them. Uh, that's why I was asking the debt question. And I'd rather for us to plan ahead of how we're gonna get things done rather than plan ahead of how we're gonna get loans to get things done. And that's that's why I think seven should be brought into it also. And when you come to the, the, the MTF, that is there, um, I've heard from a number of people who had said, it's no big deal. I just added it into the cost of my thing and I paid it off on my loan. Uh, uh, they, it's, it's about a place to live. And, and when I was first looking around, I didn't look at Rossmore, but what I was looking at the outside is look, I wanted Walnut Creek. And when I looked in Walnut Creek, it was four times more in 2003 to get what I needed in Walnut Creek than it was to buy in Walnut Creek Rossmore. And it was going to be the same square footage, same everything. So you're, this is still a bargain, even though the prices are going up and the prices will never go down. They'll never go down. And, and it's, it's just gonna continue on, but the, but the MTF is what we're gonna have to look at to support ourselves. So I really think that we have to think about this into the future of how we're gonna be less thinking about how much loans we can take and think about how we're gonna finance the things we wanna get done. And believe me in, in five years, that wish list is going to get bigger because there'll be other projects that will have to be done along the way too. So we got to kind of think about the unknown. Okay, so I'd like to just have Joel go back to view four and three on the screen. And can we agree as a committee to take view three with the 500 increase per year and eliminate view four as an option. That works. Ted and Paul, are you okay with sure, that? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. So we have one option, view three with 500 per year. So essentially the same revenues, the same MTF as what view four is saying now. Correct. But, but we would, so when I originally did view three, I limited the, the MOD uh, uh, project cost to 14.5 in order to be under the $10 million. That's really based on what we just discussed. That's really not conceivable, right? We're gonna need to increase MOD 
back up to the 18.9 million, which is going to put us over, right, the $10 million worth of additional debt. It's not 10 million, it would be higher than that. It would be, I think we changed it to 12 million. Would that do it? Okay, well, I mean, just very quickly, if I just copy this. So well, if you go to, to view one, that's basically what we're talking about with the elimination of the dollar project. Oh. That's 12,000 and then 500 a year, but just eliminate the dollar project. True. That's that's what we're looking at. Okay, I, th I think I've got it here. So that brings the loan to um, just under fourteen million dollars. Are you laughing, Kathleen? <laughs> It wasn't me. I'm, I'm, I'm too sad. Okay. What's everybody's opinion of that as a low option? I think that's fine as a low option, but I think we need to give them a, a, a different option also. Yeah. Okay, let's leave that as a low option, if you will, Joel, and let's move on to looking at the higher option that Kathleen wanted to talk about and we, we haven't talked about yet. So we have view seven, which jumps to five per uh, 15,000. Um, you could go as high as that, or we could find a mid range one and go to, I don't know, 13 or 14. Let's, let's discuss that, Paul. Um, I'm sorry, I had another point I'll save. Go ahead. Well, the other thing that we haven't talked about yet is finding alternative financing uh, scenarios or financing means besides loan, like purchase, lease purchase agreement. We don't talk about any of that here. And it's a possibility for something like the satellite um, sewer treatment plan uh, well, because think, there are i think you know, we'll discuss that as the projects come into view more okay i do staff's great at that you know investigating alternatives like that or view uh seven are you including dollar clubhouse project or eliminating it well, right now, right now, if you include it, the total loans are have just over five million, which I think is reasonable. Yeah, and it and that includes the the dollar uh, project in years twenty thirty and twenty thirty one. Right. Okay, so if if if. If we do um, seven as a um, high end, and then um, I think as Leanne was suggesting, we do um, maybe view six, which would be um, raising it to 13 on July 1st and 500 each year. Um, and, and then I would like to still take the dollar off the list and um, and see what the borrowing um, then is for MOD. So you're asking to, you're asking to do view six without dollar, correct? Yes. View six, which is increased by three thousand and five hundred per year after that without dollar. Correct. Yeah. So if we eliminate a dollar. that would reduce the additional loans to 10.3 million. Okay. All how right. About, how about we take that as a mid range? Yeah, so we have a uh, view three, view six and view seven. I'm okay with that. How about Paul and Ted? 
I'm good with that. That's a good choices to go through to take a look and see what we're going to do. Sure. Okay, so I'm at this okay point, these that. will be moved. Uh, um, will be moved on to the finance committee. So just to to reiterate your your priority projects, it, they're at, as shown. Minus the Dollar Clubhouse, and that water reclamation be remain on the wish list and considered at a, a later point, perhaps after revenue from the uh, sale of the medical center. That's right. I, I believe so, but I think water reclamation has to been, be discussed frequently. Yeah, and I think that uh, the high-end one still had dollar in it, if I'm not mistaken. The high-end one did, yes. I, I'm just <clears> asking, yes. priority-wise, as, as you're looking at the overall scope of the, the projects that, that are listed uh, here, it, does this reflect what your priorities priorities are? With the caveat that dollar only shows up on, on one option, and is MOD is your number one priority, water reclamation, continue to evaluate, but the funding not listed, dollar as the, the third priority, is that? I, I think we have to include fire mitigation. Um, uh, I, I personally, uh, I'm not, I don't know, go ahead. I, I think the, the fire mitigation and those, you know, those are low, lower dollar items. I, True. Really, when you're talking about your your three main projects uh, over the next 10, 10 years. So far, mitigation is in all of those, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So and, um, and drought management, which I think is important. Yeah, right. So um, so I would like to ask Ted and Paul if for number eight, um, they how would they feel about eliminating dollar from eight? From seven or from eight? Oh, it's all we've already seven? decided to eliminate it from seven. So I'm asking for eight. Because for eight now, the the borrowing is is um <clears throat> over um 18 million. View, view seven I includes think. dollar. View, well, we asked for it to be taken off of view seven. No, I, I think you asked for it to be taken off view no. six. Everything is left on view seven. Yeah. Oh, oh, excuse me. I'm, 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 view six. I'm, I'm, yeah. View I'm six. I'm using the wrong numbers. Yeah. View six excludes dollar. And that's what brought the debt down to 10.3 million. Okay, good. Oh, oh I'm I, sorry. Yeah. Wait, and so um, I was saying the wrong number. So for view seven, would Ted and Paul consider re, uh, eliminating um, a dollar so that the borrowing would be? Reduced, reduced below six million. I mean, I, it's it is it's it's lower than it's pretty low right now. I think if and and it's far enough out. We're talking ten years out on dollar. That by the time we're getting to it, they will have other things that they're going to be dealing with and have to make decisions about. So I don't know where we would get any plus by taking it off. Well, you are building oh, expectations oh. in the, the community that it would be done at, at a certain point. It, if you take it off, the other alternative is to do projects throughout the, the years as as ongoing kind of rehab. Right. I, see, I like I like that idea for, um, you know, don't build the expectation that we're going to do the whole thing. We can put it back on or we can put it on in pieces like uh, Jeff is talking about. Also, to keep the scenarios consistent, if we take yeah. it off, it's off all three. So we're kind of comparing apples so to So you're saying take it off, but you're really saying moving it to the wish list, which can be plugged in at any time when we feel like we're going to move towards it, correct? Yes. Right. Yeah, right. I'm fine with that. I'm Yeah, and this would make all the scenarios pretty much the same with the emphasis on taking care of MOD. Correct. I believe that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I good. agree with that. I'm okay. good with that. So you want me to remove dollar from view seven? Yes. Yes. 
It'll go to the wish list. That gives the future boards and committees and finance the most flexibility. And since none of us will be here for that. So it, it's um, still, I'm sorry, it still has a loan in the same amount because what's driving the loan is the $18.9 million in 2027 for MOD. Okay. But it, it obviously increases the cumulative cash by the end of 2031, we're at just about $15 million, which excludes the $4 million in reserve as well. Okay. All right, guys, I think that's a good plan. Oh yeah, that's a question. Um, we've been increasing the reserves by what, 250,000 a year, does this? Do this modeling scenarios that. include yes. that increase? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Okay, Joel, are you clear? You're set with the alternatives? So we've got three views, right? We have our low range view three, which is um, the increasing by $2,000 with an additional 500 per year. It includes the, the full value of MOD in 2027. It's going to have uh, additional loans of just under 14 million. And then the mid range is uh, an increase of, uh, increase of 3,000, uh, increase of, yeah, 3,000 in, in 2022. Um, so we'll have the full effect in 2023, then $500 per year for each succeeding year. And again, the full value of um, MOD in 2027, which would result in uh, new loans of 10.3 million. And then the high end is increased by 5,000 uh, with 500 in each succeeding year. Again, the same scenario for MOD, and this would uh, limit loans to 5.4 million. Okay. Okay, um, Joe, let me ask you, uh, ask one other little question. Um, the the loans that we currently have when they were first put when the third one was first put on and we had all three sort of at our max what was our uh, uh loan amount then um if i'm going from memory but i believe each one was about seven and a half or eight million dollars so i think we're talking about what 24 25 million okay so, so, so our future debt would be way lower than, uh, than we were at our max. All right, thanks. Yes. Okay, Jeff, are you okay with moving ahead here? I, I think we got it. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you, for all your help. That, that was uh, quite the exercise. Okay, we're going to move on to seven. B, which uh, we skipped, and I'm not going to devote a lot of time to this, but it it is an idea that I have for how I see the planning committee kind of coming into its own. So we've gone through this process with the master um, facilities. I mean, the facilities master plan. We can see that things are tight. Uh, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room for new projects. Um, and we have to understand that ideas come to the to us from all different angles. We get them from staff, we get them from residents. Um, in the past, you know, a group of residents could present an idea and all of a sudden we were discussing it. But now because we see a 10 year picture, I think we have to reevaluate how we take on um, discussions of proposed projects. Um, I don't have a methodology. I'm going to push this off to May, but I think all of us need to decide um, or think of ideas of how you would um, channel projects through the planning committee. 
And uh, we, may, we may not come up with anything formal, but I think we need to find a way to uh, gather details about projects that come in, um, analyze them possibly before it gets to the planning committee. I don't know. But just think about a methodology now that we have the facilities master plan. And, you know, how are we going to take all these projects that come in and how are we going to analyze them? And really, how are we going to say no? Because a lot of times we're going to have to say no. Um, So if you have any thoughts about that, you feel free to comment. But if there are none, I think we'll just push it off to May. But do think about it. That's your homework. Jeff, Jeff has his hand up. Does he have something to say? Jeff? Oh, no, it's not. You don't. I'm sorry. That's me. Paul? Um, well, to get this rolling thing started, I think we need to look at um categorizing some projects between major minor and and middle um and deciding how that they should be done i i like the prioritization process that we have that we use this year to rank the potential projects and to eliminate and decide on which were important and which were could be um, deferred for future years or or maybe even eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, this, this has been a, a really good project. I think we need to also think about alternative financing to put all of these projects and all of this wish list on a um, MTF, which is limited in its scope, even if we increase it. Um, uh, is 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 kind of um, we'll never accomplish what we have on the wish list. You know, let's just put that out there, and maybe we need find. You know, if if there is a group out there that um, wants a specific project, maybe we should ask be asking them for um, a fifty fifty split or something like that. Um, some alternative, some creative financing ways needs to be added to this list, we are going to uh, be facing more and more impact from climate change. Um, our insurance rates are going, are going up and the board is going to be faced with um, changing the, the financial arrangements for um, insurance policies moving forward. So there are a lot of challenges that are going to come down and, and it's going to be more and more important for um, evacuation roads like we have for constant monitoring of our uh, areas that are, are not developed, but to keep them to minimize the fire risk that is up there. So there are a lot of challenges that we have moving forward. Okay. Thank you. All right. If there's nothing further on that, I will adjourn the meeting. We are meeting again on Thursday, May 12th. Um, I believe we'll have a new committee. Kathleen, thank you very much for being on the planning committee. We've had a heck of a year. <laughs> so I really appreciate your contributions and uh, we'll miss your insight. But you, right, can you. you can always call up public comment. You can always call up. Sure. So thank you, everybody. Yes, and thank you, Kathleen. Thank you all. It's been and fun. We'll, uh, we'll see you in May. All right. Take care. Not me, but. Not you. <laughs>